All right, our next guest is uh, responsible for this beautiful hat that I'm wearing right now. She's a local headwear designer who's all about unique styles. Uh, Danielle Mazin is here to talk about the meeting of the hat to uh, cap off the royal wedding. And then some hello and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be of here. Of course. So you are you're London born. You, uh, yes. you made Aliyah uh, not too many years ago. So you could tell us the, the tradition of the hat. Like how do you remember your childhood as far as, you know, seeing all of these right. royals wearing these beautiful pieces? <laughs> right. So I actually... I I come from London, I'm from England, and basically growing up as a child, it was always a thing that once you're married, you can wear a hat to a wedding, and it was very exciting. And before that, you wouldn't wear a hat because then it shows that you're married and it's, too, you know, you don't look too available. Ah. So now's my time, like I'm actually living in Israel already, I've been here almost six years, and I got married three years ago, and I said I need to wear a hat. So, you know, I was thinking, where can I buy a hat in Tel Aviv? It doesn't exist, so I'm going to make one. I studied clothing, fashion design, but I didn't do hats. But actually, um, so I wanted to make something for myself for the wedding, and everybody said, you know, it's amazing, you should do this as a business. Wow, and, and then, boom. It just took off from there. Three years later, here we are. Look at this, and, and you're so, and you're, hmm. I mean, so prolific. So, like, talk about the one that you have here, because I know this is kind of your, your personal favorite, so yeah, thank well, this you is for so, sharing yeah. it with me. <laughs> this is something that This is, is like a piece of art, literally. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's really a special piece it's very niche and there's something very appropriate for the royal wedding right now um, in the beginning we have you know the British colors of the flag and these are the roots of where I was born and then it kind of goes up you know to the feathers of the blue and the white where I'm like letting your Zionism yeah, flow out of your Britishness right it's the Israeli flag when you turn around you see the blue and the white and that's where I'm like flowering and flourishing She's, you're Israel. flowering <laughs> and it's just my dual identity of Britain and Israel together and yeah it's a fabulous it's something piece. we all go through it's like we have our home and yeah. We have our home. Exactly. It's like, it's like two homes. We have two homes. Yeah. I, I struggle with this sometimes. Right. Two so identity. But what is the main topic? meaning of the hat, especially when it comes to royal weddings? Like, it is such right. a, you know old traditional yeah. thing that I think England I think hats. Yes, of course. So these kind of styles are called fascinators. Um, fascinator is a term that is not a full-on hat, like something like this would be a full-on hat. Uh -huh. This is a much bigger hat. A fascinator is something that's small, something that you put on the side of the head. It's always normally worn towards the right, like you're wearing. Yes, that, what is it? Why yeah. on the right in particular? And um, this is the, like the royal etiquette. This is okay. how they wear them. And, and they kind of match it with your eyebrow arch Right, so you're meant to wear it towards the eyebrow for like it's added... It's science! <laughs> yeah, it's for added glamour and elegance. And and, but nowadays, what's happened, Fascinator is so overused, it's become very generalized in the media. Mm -hmm. And um, I prefer to call them something like, you know, a headwear dress or a hat or a headpiece. Um, Fascinator. Well, because then you could also be you it's know, more a little niche. bit more experimental, exactly. Right, and it's more exclusive. And, you know, these products, the same way the royal family have very exclusive products, the same way, like, I believe that my products need to have that uniqueness and that exclusivity yeah. and luxury. This is great. So, how do you uh, so how do you make your hats? Like, is it made out of straw? Like, are so, all these yeah. different materials? All the fabrics. Yeah, they actually it's they come from England. You cannot get them in Israel. So you go to England and get them, or you're able to? I them in, and okay. yeah, this is the problem that we have because there's you the know, customs and taxes. Yeah, and all the to bring them in, barriers I mean, to entry. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm working with high quality fabrics with right. straws for so the you summer. Say this is really homegrown. Yeah, fabrics. yeah, and we block it ourselves. We have wooden blocks, and we stretch the fabric over the blocks, and we do custom orders so people can come to us, they come with their dress, they match something specific, whether it's for a wedding, whether it's for a bar mitzvah, an official event, and we really cater to make something special, unique to wow, them. And, so wait, the and then how do you sell your stuff? Do you have a store or you sell all, all online? We sell everywhere. We sell in four countries. We sell in London, New York, Canada, France, in Israel as well, actually. Um, and then we have three stores, in two in Jerusalem, one in Tel Aviv. This one is the past three years yeah. you've pulled this a off? Showroom, a showroom in Tel Aviv and an online website. We ship worldwide and we have clients from all over the world. And what's amazing is that not only do we have Israeli clients, but we also have, not only do we have, sorry, British clients, but we also have um, a lot of Israelis. So we've got a lot of international clients this in Israel, is great. but Israelis, I mean, and the thing is with these hats, we're, we're out of time, we're out of time, but still, this is great, and 